Hello, this is instruction video how to install in Igor 7 Irina Nika or Indra packages. Um, and this is installer, specific installer for installing from a GitHub uh, repository of these packages, which will be used for Igor 7 and higher. This uh, procedure cannot be used for installing um, Igor in Igor 6. <coughs> uh, first, me, let me show you that we have an Igor depository. There is, this is the address for it on in GitHub uh, under J. Ilovsky, sex under bar Igor code. This will contain most of the times and updated versions of the packages. Uh, GitHub has an interesting way of providing me with the possibility of declare a snapshot of this depository to be a release. And then what I did is I wrote a procedure, uh, Igor macro file, which will allow you to install whichever release is available. Uh, so this is the Igor code depository. If you go in, it is an Igor installer. There are Igor, Igor installers, which I was using previously for uh, Igor 6, here is for Igor 7, and that's the old Java installer. If you go in here, the, P, the latest PXP file is the current version of the installer. But <coughs> if we go back, here is the SAX Igor code, and there are various versions of the code which are made for releases. Uh, we will be installing this re-release of 628-2016 versions. This is currently the only release there is. Uh, the other ones should not be used because in the meantime I was working on the installer and changing configurations. So this one is the only version which can be currently installed. It contains packages from June 28, 2016, but it's packaged for Igor 7. So what we have here is I have Igor 7, now we have a 7.01, 64-bit version, and I have opened a Igor GH installer Irina Nika version 0.6 beta. And when I do that, I get a nothing experiment. There's nothing in it. In here is an install packages. I can go in and select open GitHub GUI. When you do it, you get two panels. You get a panel here which contains the controls, and here is a instruction file. So hopefully there is enough instructions to follow if necessary. What you want to do first is you want to decide if you are installing from a local folder or if you're installing from the GitHub depository. So <clears throat> the installer allows you to check both places and install from whichever place you want. The reason why you can install from local folder is because downloading from GitHub may take for a long time because the file is like 80 megabytes. And so if you are if you are on a slow internet network, uh, it may take, you know, three, four, five minutes before you get 80 megabytes on your computer. So in this case, I have the file on a desktop. You can see it here on the left hand side, which is the file we're running from. And I have actually downloaded a current version of the code from the depository. Uh, I can use that or what I can do is I can um, install fro directly from the GitHub. We'll try the direct GitHub but it's going to take a long time so I'm going to cut a part of that in the middle while it's downloading. First thing what you want to do is check packages versions. When you do it, it downloads an information from the GitHub which tells it what versions are available and what the releases are available. So out here it now lists releases. This is the currently what is def uh, defined as a current release. If there are previous releases in that there would be here a list of previous releases. Uh, you can also include beta releases. So if there's a release which is declared as a beta it will be available here. So if you check beta releases there would be now beta releases. What I did is I actually declared the same release both as a release and a beta release. So um, even though it's the same code and same package, it's here multiple times. Notice there's a master. What master is, it's whatever is now, today, at this moment in the GitHub depository. And that is important to keep in mind that there's no guarantees the master will even run. 
uh, I have all intentions of holding the master to be usable, but <clears throat> if there happen to be a bug in it, it should be fixed before a release, but it may not be working at this time correctly anyway. But uh, it allows you to grab the current version if you know something was recently fixed for your needs in that. So <clears throat> you can also use local folder. If you check local folder, it asks you where the folder of files is, and you can actually select. This is my what I called my favorite version. So it's sax on the body got code dash my favorite version. That happens to be whatever I downloaded. You can actually hold on that and have it available at your facility, and everyone can install from the same package, and then they'll all have the same code. You select the code. It will see, it will get you a message, it's working, it's reading the local version here because it needs to verify what is there and turns out it has the same information in that. Notice it says local version versions in and whatever the folder is. It found what the versions of the packages are. E-1 means that there are, uh, that these packages are, uh, are, are not present in here. So I'm going to do so I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to hit check versions, and what you can see is this will now be um, this will now be uh, whatever is available uh, there. Next, I need to decide what am I checking. So I'm going to I'm going to ins be installing, and I'll install everything. Okay. Keep in mind that you can install. You don't have to install everything, but if you delete something, uninstall a specific package, you should reinstall all the other packages because some of the shared libraries may have been deleted and things may not necessarily work. So now with this, I can go and hit install update selected. And what it will do is it will start downloading and you can see it's now downloading a package zip file from GitHub. Since for some reason my uh, virtual machine today is relatively slow in downloading files, it will take probably about a minute or so. So I will uh, restart uh, when this changes. Okay, and now you can see that things have changed. The installer is currently unzipping the downloaded file, so it's uh, it's running it's running on Windows. It's running a batch file which I have created, and which will unzip the file. Once it's unzipped in a temp folder, it will then be copied to the desktop. So at this moment, there is an uninstallation going on. Uh, that all takes a little bit of time. Now it's uh, copying the file, and it's creating a folder, so it created a folder here on the desktop of the name sax-igorco-november-2016-2 and now it's running a procedure where it's copying the files in the appropriate places. And when it's done, you can see it comes up and says a custom installation finished successfully. At this moment, it gives you instructions. You can delete the zip file, delete the folder with the unzip data and install log if everything is fine. Uh, of course, you don't have to do it, and uh, if you decide you want to use the uh, unzipped file or the zipped file um, as a backup to have it locally on your machine, so you can reinstall later if you want. What it did at the end, it rescanned the uh, current uh, macros available to Igor. It verified the versions. It's telling you now that the local version is 2.61, release is 2.61, and everything is okay. So now what we have is we have a Igor installer file which put all the, all the files where the files where they belong. We then on the desktop have the zip file which was downloaded. We have its unzipped version, and then if we have an install log which you can then open and you can look at it, it's not very helpful for most people. But the important thing on that one is if something goes wrong. So if something goes wrong, can you get an error message? The instructions say send me um, via email the install log so I can verify what happened where and which part of the code failed. Uh, the log should have relatively reasonable information in it. So now if you decide you want to uninstall the file so you don't want to use them again, the procedure is the same. You basically get here, you do check versions, 
it will upload and download everything what is here. It then knows <coughs> what's needed. Then you simply can uncheck or check the checkboxes of the files you want to uninstall and just hit uninstall. It will download the configuration files from the web which tell it which files belong to which package and it simply goes in and deletes the file. It makes notes again into the same log and uh, basically it now cleans it up and you can see that no, no package is installed anymore. Uh, so you can this way you can control which packages are uninstalled or uninstalled. Keep in mind if you have uninstalled a single package you now want to go in and reinstall the packages, okay? The ones which you want to use. For example, let's say you wanted to get rid of Indra, you can now install this one. If you already have a copy on the local folder, we already have that here, why don't we just use it? In this case, we can select it only the ones which you want to use. Check use local folder, pick the November 2016-2. It rescans it again. And now you can check just few packages. Keep in mind that all of these three packages, Irina, Indra, and, and Nika, each one of them needs XOP support, and you can install either 32-bit or 64-bit. In case you have a 32-bit version of Igor 7, you just install the 32-bit. If you have 64-bit, you can install both of them. There's no penalty in doing that. And then you just simply install. At this moment, it's not going to be downloading anything from the web, so it's much faster. We can just copy locally the files from one place to another, and it's done. We're finished. It's just going to tell us what is installed. We're going to see that Indra is not available. Okay. And you see that we have a Irina, Nika. We have the XOP support, but we don't have the Indra. So this is the proper way how to install and uninstall the packages. This works only in Igor 7 and it's using the GitHub uh, for the distribution. If you have any questions, uh, send me an email. If you find a problem with the install, please send me the log and any other information, mainly what is specific or special on your computers. I have tested this on a Mac, I have tested it on a Windows, I have tested it on various operating systems it seems to work so if there is something unique on your computer i need to know what it is so i can you know write some kind of workaround to